I'm Brother Neuro, and it's time for the Neuroclock News. Hit that intro! Time goes slowly, but carries on. And now the best years have come and gone. You took me by surprise. I didn't realize that you were Everybody. My name's Brother Neuro. Now, before I crack on with this episode of the Neuro Clock News, and I've only got one thing to talk about in this episode, and I, I'm, I'm telling you now that there's a good chance this could you know, degenerate into a bit of a massive fucking rant. But before I crack on with this, you know, for those of you who don't know, this was originally meant to be uh, one of three sections in a full-length episode of the Neuro Clock News. However, when I made the first and second section, I realised actually these are good enough to be videos on their own, and all three sections combined, this would have probably been close to an hour and 20 minutes long. And I didn't see the point in uploading it a video of that length when I could upload them all individually and they could stand on their own. So, for those of you who have not seen it, and I've already uploaded the first and second section uh, of the Neuro Clock News. I uploaded them last weekend, and you can go and check them out. They're on my second channel called Insane Rap Bloke, which I recommend you subscribe to in case you want to keep track of me, because I do have a habit of having channels, my, my channels disappear randomly. You know. <laughs> so after you've watched this video, you can go to that those videos linked below and check them out. Right. So once you've watched this video, you can go and watch those two. So if you haven't seen those two, you get three new Dick Coughlin videos in one day. I know no, right? And, and th don't worry. If you know, I know that that news has caused an immediate sexual arousal in you. Don't be ashamed. Right? Don't be scared. Right? Go with it. It's perfectly natural. It's perfectly normal. Now, if you enjoy this video, ladies and gentlemen, and in fact, if you enjoy you know any of my videos and my content in general, please do you know subscribe if you haven't already. If you're new here, you've missed out on a lot. Fucking hit the subscribe, smash that, smash that fucking like button, whack the bell, and etc. Do the other fucking tw twist the keys, fucking wipe your ass, whatever the else else YouTube insists you have to do in order to be able to find my fucking content. And if you really do enjoy the videos and you wanna you wanna support me a little bit more. More, you can do so by either going to Patreon and uh, making a pledge on there, or by making a donation on PayPal, or fuck it, go to my merchandise shop and buy a fucking t-shirt. Yes, what the hell? And with all that said, let's crack on. Now, I want to make it clear, I do not like the fact that in the year 2019, I have to still make videos about the individual who this video is about, and his name is Tommy fucking Robinson. And the reason I, more than anyone else, have a fucking problem with fucking talking about Tommy Robinson is the fact that I, more than anyone else, have been talking about Tommy Robinson since the fucking beginning. In fact, the first ever video I made talking about Tommy Robinson and, as he was back then, the leader of the English Defence League, was back in mid-2010. So that's nearly nine fucking years ago. And then he he kind of petered out into insignificance, but then he came back again because people seem to forget every single fucking thing that I'd fucking taught you about them, and they decided for some reason they were going to give him another go. At the moment, yesterday, Tommy had a public rally in which didn't go very well for him, and you know, of which there are a million and one things I could talk about. However, I'm not going to talk about that because there are lots of fucking things that are developing issues with that story, and so I'll probably deal with that at a later date, probably in the next time I do a Neuro Clock News episode, which could be whenever the fuck, right? But I want to talk about two stories that uh, happened last week involving Tommy Robinson. Now, the thing that pissed me off about these two stories was the fact that the first one was getting more press coverage and more fucking, you know, was getting spread around and talked about more than the second one. And the second one is, quite frankly, just utterly contemptible and irredeemably vile in every way. And the fact that this one wasn't getting the coverage was really got up my ass. Thankfully, since then, it's you know got a little bit more coverage. However, that is still not good enough for me. So the first story involved the fact that some videos were leaked to uh, the press uh, that Tommy Robinson apparently uh, made on his phone of him 
under the influence of you know various substances i don't know what let's say i don't know um certain colombian marching powder shall we say we can't be too fucking certain but it was tommy robinson um in in a foreign country literally off his trumpet being and just being the being who he really is right and apparently these videos were not uploaded to any of his social media these were sent privately over his phone to a friend and then they magically end up in various different various fucking newspapers now i don't know about you i have to question the judgment of a man who is willing to get coked off his fucking trumpet and then walk around making a complete and utter ass of himself saying things that are completely and utterly unimpeachably fucking stupid right and then for them to appear in the press the next day these are people you consider friends i personally would not would be a bit pissed off with any of my friends if they suddenly fucking decided to leak them but let's move on to that this was just one example of the headline english defense league founder tommy robinson makes racist slur in drunken online video as he rants he can get drugs in any country in the world that's one of tommy robinson's proudest achievements is that he can get drugs anywhere in the world basically what this is is racist coked up con artist goes up goes on a fucking jolly up around the world at other people's expense and when he's there he gets drugged up and acts racist but i'm not going to play the videos that were leaked of tommy doing what he did because you know, i don't want to give youtube any reason to fucking flag this for hate speech but i will show you this text that basically gives you the highlights anti-islam campaigner tommy robinson makes racist slur and brags about buying drugs everywhere he goes in a video he said no matter where i've gone in the world i score i will show you tonight i've gone to qatar i've gone to doha and scored gear on the sesh while they're all praying the master race robinson real name stephen yaxley lennon hyphenated fucking surname you cunt then appeared to make racist comments while asking for a taxi which he describes as a little <clears throat> that drives a car in the drunken video shot on his phone he also rants about and this is the best part being the king of the whole islam race now, of course, this might be Tommy Robinson off his tits and it will be dismissed, but just remember that next time you get one of those geezers who says, oh, it's not racist because Islam is not a race, it's a religion. Well, according to Tommy Robinson, it isn't, and he should know he's the king. He also talks about how he would be fighting for Israel if war broke out with Palestine, which says it right there. What do you mean, if war broke out with Palestine? What, as opposed to what we've had for the last 60 years between Israel and Palestine. And what does it say about a guy who claims to love England so much and be a fucking English fucking nationalist and, a Brit and that bulldog spirit that he's more interested in fighting for Israel than he is for this country? Like, get your tin hat on, fucking God, if you're that keen, mate. Now, I personally don't give a shit what T Tommy Robinson chooses to do in his own personal time, in his own personal life, in his private life, for recreation. I'm the last person to have a go at someone who fuck it for taking drugs recreationally. That's perfectly fine. But two points, right? His fans who like to fucking come and attack me, saying, "Oh, you're just a fucking, you're just a dirty fucking junkie degenerate." Yeah, well, what's this fucking bullshit right here then? Secondly, right, I find it fucking incredibly fucking hilarious that it's considered news that Tommy Robinson is off his tits on fucking on, on snorting powder. Right when in 2011 I made a video in which part of it was talking about this particular image that had been leaked that was taken at Tommy Robinson when he was round another friend's house. Hmm, you, you and your friends, Tommy, and it was this photo here. Yes, what you've got there, and I, you know, I know I don't wish to be patronising here. But what you've got there is on the right, Tommy Robinson looking, as you can see, a little bit, shall we say, bleary-eyed and not fully there. And at the bottom left, you can see what you know what is best described as a as a sort of bank card next to a small, shall we say, just a little 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 mound of white powder. Of course, I can't tell you for certain what that white powder is or why there happens to be a fucking bank card next to it or why that both of those things happen to be right next to Tommy Robinson when he's looking a little bit fucking spaced out. I can't say for certain, but it doesn't take Hercule fucking dicking bastard Poirot to put two and two together. 
So it, this isn't me having a go at Tommy because he takes drugs. It's just the fact that this should not be considered fucking news because this was been well known by anyone, including me. And if I knew something fucking eight years ago, there's no reason anybody in the press who claims to fucking cover stuff like this shouldn't know either. It should not be used that a geezer who is well known for getting coked off his tits and photographed next to piles of white powder with bank cards next to him is off his tits taking powders and fucking doing other things with bank cards around all over the fucking world at the expense of his poor fucking gullible ring nut fan base who buy into his fucking sob story bullshit. So now I've addressed that, now I want to talk about the real story, right? And, and I'm not letting this go, right? Because this is fucking incredible. Because there is no one, there is no public figure on any re end of the political spectrum. There is no politician who could do what I'm about to tell you that Tommy Robinson did and get away with it. They would never fucking recover. Their career would be over. Full stop. And if that's true for everyone, then I refuse to sit here and let people make excuses or try and fucking brush it off or dust this under the carpet. Because if you do, you're a fucking scumbag. You're no better than him. You are enabling and you are contributing to the delusions of grandeur of a fucking wannabe little fascist piece of shit like him. So pay attention and listen. Now last week, Tommy Robinson shared a photograph that he took whilst out and about, I'm not exactly sure where exactly he was, but it was a photograph of a poster that was, uh, pr that was advertising and uh, making people aware of, a, of an organisation uh, that existed within the local county called Rape Crisis. Rape Crisis is a non-profit charitable organisation you know, that basically exists to offer support, guidance and counselling to any women who have been the victims of, uh, or who, who are currently being the victims of sexual abuse, rape, whether it's present, recent, or if it's in the past, right? However, this particular poster, it was advertising a specific sub-category or a subsection of uh, rape crisis that they offer. Um, however, Tommy Robinson uh, saw this poster, and I'll show you the poster. This is what he, this is what he shared. Right, rape crisis, free and confidential support for black, Asian and minority ethnic women who have experienced sexual violence, whether it happened recently or in the past, contact number and there's a mobile phone number and then below that there's a landline number. And Tommy Robinson shared that image with the following text. I guess it's okay to rape white women then. Now, I try probably more than most and probably more than I should to really try to understand and sympathise with the people I make videos about because in order to reach hearts and minds and get to people you have to be able to fucking first work out why they are, why they think the way they do. But this is one of those occasions when I literally cannot get my head around the mindset, the desperate, almost terminal persecution complex the level of victimhood and desperation that you have to you have to live in the level of paranoia that you have to achieve in order for you to look at that poster and conclude that what it's actually saying yes it's offering a service but what it's really saying is that it's 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 saying that raping white women is not a big deal. In fact, it's okay. To quote Candy Sewing, it's okay, fine. However, even if, even if the rape crisis existed solely for the, for the purposes of offering support and counselling for black, Asian and minority ethnic women, that would not justify you concluding that Unless you're saying, unless there are no organisations for women in general. However, there is an organisation that exists for women in general. It's called Rape Crisis. Here's an example of one of the main Rape Crisis posters that you're generally more likely to see in most places. In fact, you're probably almost certainly likely to find one right next to that one. Rape Crisis. 
right? Independent Sexual Violence Advisor Service. We'll, you know, with all the stuff there, and then there's a fucking mobile ph then there's the landline number. Because the landline number is the main phone number. On the other poster, the first number, the larger print number, was the mobile number. Because they decided, because certain groups may feel an extra air of vulnerability, or, you know, they may feel like there's added, there's other stigmas attached to them that will make them less likely to be believed or listened to, they set up sections so that certain groups can ring up and speak to someone who is of the same ra uh, racist or ethnic background as them. You know, they've got this bizarre idea that maybe if you make it easier or more, make, it, make, make the process, you know, make it more comfortable for women to come forward, then they're more likely to. And I think we can all agree that is a good thing. At least I would hope we can at least agree on that. However, you don't even need to fucking look at that poster. You don't need to know that that poster exists because you can work this out for two reasons. One, even if it was targeted mainly to black, Asian and ethnic minority. Do you honestly think if you're a white woman and you see that number and you ring them up because you want to talk to someone about, you know, about the, you know, your experiences or something that's happened to you regarding rape or sexual assault, that they're going to say, hello madam, are you white? Well, I'm sorry we can't help you, bye bye, bang. Do you think that? No, of course that's not going to fucking happen, you, you absolutely demented psychopathic cunts. Of course that's not going to fucking happen. Right. However, there's another thing you could have done to work it out, and this is where it gets very, very fucking convenient. Go back to, let's look again at the picture Tommy Robinson shared of the, of the other poster. Now, first of all, it's at the front of the window, which means it's on the same side of the glass of the window that Tommy Robinson is standing on. And you'll notice that the poster is not, you, you can't see all of it that there's part of it being obscured on the left. And call me cynical, but when I show you what you can see on that left, what is being hidden from you, I, I really would struggle to sit there and believe that any of you can think that this is a fucking coincidence. Because this is what the full poster looks like. You see right there, on the bottom left, you see what you've got there? You've got four, four photographs of women who are all, what colour are they? Yeah, they're all fucking white, aren't they? I don't know about you, but does anyone else find it an amazing fucking coincidence that the, part, the only part of the poster that you couldn't see was the part of the poster that would that anyone with any common sense could spot and go, hold on, if it's just for minority, ethnic minority, black and Asian women, why are there fucking, why are there four, there's actually five pictures out of all those pictures of, of white women who are white in the first place. It's because, believe it or not, I've got a funny feeling that Tommy Robinson didn't want you to see that because even he knew that if even his fucking fans, who are not the most fucking sceptical or critical of thought, could have fucking spotted that. Even even in the state that he showed the poster as it was, there were still people pointing out, hold on, this is just this isn't the full organization, this is just one department of the organization. It's a separate phone number. Right? Now this was pointed out to Tommy very, very quickly, as soon as he shared this, because it didn't take long for this to get fucking spread around. So he knew. He had no reason, there is no reason why he should not have known almost immediately the mistake that he had made. But he didn't correct it. He didn't take it down. He left that up. And it would be bad enough that he just did that. But here's the thing, the poster shows phone numbers, contact details. Now what do you think Tommy Robinson's many thousands and thousands of followers did when they saw that poster. Yet, they decided to bombard it, to clog up all of the phone lines, to clog up all of the answering service, to clog up all of it. They decided to bombard it with abuse, with complaints, God knows what else they fucking said. But that's what they did, and they caused this or charitable organisation that exists in order to help women who have been real victims of sexual assault and rape.
Whatever your colour, whatever your creed, no one gives a fuck. It exists to help them. And these, thanks to Tommy Robinson, and thanks to his fucking butt nut, fucking peanut brain, fucking moronic fucking followers, right, they caused this charitable organisation to have to shut the fuck down because they could not get through to the people who needed help because now that bullshit is out there now that fucking stuff's been posted which means they cannot use those numbers anymore they need new numbers they need new lines set up they need new forms of contact which means they have to do all of the fucking redo all of the posters all of the fucking advertising they have to redo all of it and i don't even want to guess or estimate how many people will now not get the fucking help they need or want or require simply because Tommy Robinson thought it was okay to fucking exploit and, and lie about a fucking charity that helps rape victims just to push his bullshit racist agenda. There is no... Ju anyone who's even thinking of posting any attempt to rationalise or justify this, do not fucking bother. If for no other reason, then it'll be a waste of your fucking time. Right? Because I ain't going to fucking listen to it. I ain't going to hear it. I am not going to fuck... I'm not you. I weren't born yesterday. I've been following this cunt since day fucking one. I know what he does. Because this ain't the first time he's done something like this. Because as with the last story, let me tell you about another story. Something that happened in 2013 that shows you the kind of man we are dealing with here. In May of 2013... Tommy Robinson posted several tweets saying he'd heard about some big scandal or story that, you know, that, you know, that had taken place somewhere at a school in Luton. He didn't fully give details until much later that evening when he posted this. At 8.50pm, had it confirmed, little girl raped in school, more to follow. Now, what was the more to follow? Well, funnily enough, exact details and how he came across this and what his source was was a little we were found a little bit wanting for that however the next day right his then english defense league fucking cohort kevin carroll right, was you know able to furnish us with at least some if not poorly spelt and badly fucking worded uh, you know details in the form of another tweet where are the luton town authorities and media's public outrage at the gang rape of a seven of a year seven child by Muslims in a school toilet in Farley Hill. Now, for those of you who don't know, year seven is the first year of what in this school country we would call uh, high school, which means this girl they're referring to would have been 11 years old. And they're claiming that she was gang raped in the toilet of her school in Farley Hill, Luton, by Muslims, and there was. And and and, it, and and for some reason, nothing was. And for somehow, someone knew about this, and they decided the person they were going to go to was Tommy fucking Robinson. It just so happens that we managed to get to the bottom of this. Now, Kevin Carroll is asking a question. I'll read it in full again. Where are the Luton Town authorities and media's public outrage at the gang rape of Year 7 child by Muslims in a school toilet in Farley Hill? I'm going to give you two seconds to think before you can try and come to your own conclusion. What do you think the answer is? Where are they? Right, one, two. They're nowhere because it didn't fucking happen. Because of this tweet being sent out, the fucking local police station had to post a public tweet stating for the record there was absolutely no truth to this story whatsoever. The school had to come out in the local, national you know, media and on the news. It had to even fucking create a Twitter account just to make sure that people were aware that there was no basis to this whatsoever. Now, do you think Tommy Robinson fucking retracted that? Do you, think he do you think he went in a bit more detail? Because if you knew that happened and the media were covering up, you should fucking, you should be there standing up against it. But he didn't. He said nothing. He let it out there. Because he doesn't care. He's a liar. He doesn't care about people. He doesn't give a fuck about you. He doesn't give a fuck about the truth. He doesn't give a fuck about this country. He doesn't give a fuck about anything about lining his fucking pockets. And he lives in a world where fucking God help us, shame on all of us. He lives in a fucking world where, where some shitbag fucking 
unscrupulous little cunt like him can fucking get all the money he wants just by playing on the fucking fears. And all he's got to do is not have the fucking conscience or the sense of decency to give a fuck about lying about a child being raped or give a fuck whether he destroys a fucking charitable organisation designed to help fucking women who have been raped. He doesn't give a shit as long as it helps him. And if you support him, you are enabling this cunt to carry on with this. That is a dangerous amount of power this guy has. And he has, he seems to have no fucking problem with it. None whatsoever. And let's not forget, this is the guy who the UKIP, UK Independence Party, hired last year to, as their, if you remember this story, he was hired as their, what was it again? Oh yes, their, their, their special personal advisor on rape gangs. Can you think of a worse person to a point on any issue? Unless the issue is how to be a fucking shitbag cunt. How to be a fascist piece of shit. How to fucking not give a crap about anybody. That's who he is. That's who he's always been. I've been saying this since day one. So don't even try to fucking justify it. He hasn't changed. He's not better. He's not growing. He's not learning. He's the same horrid little piece of crap he's always been, and he always fucking will be. And I have absolutely no fucking tolerance or patience for anyone who wants to tell me otherwise, because I've known this ba bastard better than any one of you lot out there. And unlike you, I'm not going to let him take me for a fucking mug. And you shouldn't let him do it to you either. I'm sick of living in this world where we've let the fucking hecklers on stage. We've let the lunatics take over the asylum. We've let the worst people get away with and exploit our own fucking insecurities for their own personal gain at no fucking advantage to ourselves. At no benefit to ourselves. And the sad thing is, all of this is your choice. It's optional. You don't have to do it. You don't have to be weak. My name's Dick Coughlin. This has been the Neuroclock News. Good night, may God be less. And where there's no sense, there's no feeling. And fuck Tommy Robinson.